maybe I will uh, remain seated, uh, not to be tired like uh, Bernard. Um, okay, so I'd like first to start to thanks uh, for the invitation today. Um, and I will try to place my speech maybe in between the research part that we've seen and Sentinel uh, Copernicus, uh, how we will use all that knowledge in order to help uh, in the implementation of the common agri agriculture policy in, uh, in Europe. So I'm coming from uh, the Commission, the Joint Research Center. This is one of the Directorate General of the Commission. And it's a specific one, let's say, because it's the one that is providing technical support research for the other DGs of the Commission and also to the Member States Administration uh, in order to implement the different policies you have, uh, you have in Europe. So I'm here to uh, speak about the support of remote sensing since years, how we are using remote sensing information in, uh, in the frame of the common agricultural policy and as you will see mainly in the frame of uh, the, the control of subsidies for, for farmers in Europe. So why uh, are we supporting and working on the, on the agriculture policy? So as you know, uh, this is one of the oldest policy in Europe. This is also, uh, we hear that every day, uh, this is the most costly common uh, policy in Europe. Uh, well, this is a, a false idea. Uh, it's true that this is the most common uh, policy. Uh, a level of budget, uh, but if you compare to the budget of other policies in Europe, uh, agriculture is maybe the tenth one in, in Europe. So this is the most expensive in the common budget, but by far not the most expensive in the budget of uh, different topics uh, in Europe. So why do we have a common policy? Indeed, uh, it is uh, created after war, and the main uh, aim of that is, was to produce food uh, for the entire Europe, and it's still the case, it's still the main uh, topic of the, of the agriculture policy, is to ensure food in Europe and also uh, among the world. But obviously, uh, with the years, the objectives and the needs have changed, and the more we go, the more also there is a need to pay attention to the environment, to the climate, and this policy has to contribute uh, to those needs. And why and how we do that? Uh, so it's managed, and as I said, with the European funds that are distributed to the member states or given back to the member states. And it's up to the member states to ensure that the policy are well implemented in their country and in order to do that, since years, uh, there is something that is called integrated administration and control system that is built at level of member states in order uh, to manage that budget and ensure that this budget is uh, well uh, given to the farmers so uh, they, they do the, the work correctly. So, as I was saying, it's a long history. The Common Agricultural Policy started in the 60s and uh, evolving through the years, both uh, with the targets of uh, the, the policy, the, the type of financial support given first to the market uh, at the beginning and then directly to the farmers taking into consideration the type of crop. And then came what we call the uh, uncoupled support, but uh, starting to pay attention to the environment and the more we go, the more we pay attention to the uh, environment and obviously also uh, okay, an increase in demand because we were also uh, having more and more uh, member states in the, in the European Commission. As I mentioned, so this policy is something like uh, 60 billion uh, euro per year divided mainly in uh, direct payments and second pillar payments, so incentive in order to improve the farming system in, in Europe. Uh, it is uh, covering some, something like 7 million farmers in Europe and uh, obviously uh, if urban areas represent something like 2% of the territory, 
you know that, uh, okay, the uh, rural areas is something like 90% of the territory and half of them is farm. So we are really dealing with uh, huge amount of money and huge amount of areas. Once again, I repeat it, the, uh, in this history, the cap has changed uh, and has been reformed several times in order to follow uh, the different uh, problematic that we encountered in, in the history. So first, it was mainly to produce food and then we had an excess of food, so we had to change uh, in order to reduce that. We came to the uh, compulsory uh, payments and then uh, started to have all the necessity to work on the environment and the more we go, you have the environmental aspect. So with this political evolution down, you have also a technical evolution that, that is going on and indeed the combination of those two elements has allowed always in the time uh, to use technology in order to help uh, implementing correctly uh, the, the legislation as best as possible. Uh, all over the years. So we started with remote sensing in the 90s. It was a bit before Baveno indeed. Uh, we started to use remote sensing. So first everything that was done was controlled at farm. So really going on the farm and there was nothing else than that uh, in order to, uh, to, to control the fact that uh, the work was done correctly. In the 90s we see that after we started to use remote sensing at that time, the better resolution was, was 10 meter, uh, often uh, uh, pan chart. And with the evolution, we started to have in the, in the uh, around 2000, one meter resolution. We are now around 50 centimeters, 30 centimeters resolution. But as it has been presented uh, just before, we have since two years also the availability of 10 meter resolution for free with Sentinel. So all that information is really useful for them in, in order to help implementing. So our group uh, was born also indeed in the, in the 90s and uh, we are behind what we call the control with remote sensing. So really using the remote sensing technology in order to help administration to do the control of farms uh, using uh, that, that information. So really the idea uh, we, we have is to use the knowledge uh, that, uh, that we have, to use the technology that exists in order to, uh, to try to see what can be implemented uh, at large scale, so all over Europe that can be imposed for all administration or used by all administration over Europe. So it's not using rocket science, uh, very uh, accurate uh, technology, because it has to be implemented large scale. So once again, to speak about the, the evolution, it's not something that, is, that goes uh, very, very fast. So concerning the use of remote sensing, it, as I said, it started uh, in the 90s with the, mainly with the use of, uh, of spot imagery at that time, so 10, 10 meter resolution. And we had some pilot studies with member states, and we have to say that uh, Italy in that has always been a uh, kind of front runner, uh, being the first one of uh, using imagery uh, for the, uh, the, uh, the olive trees uh, register, for instance, for the vineyard registers, and then for the control of remote sensing, doing some tests. And as the uh, technology was evolving and also as we were testing those, those elements, we uh, also uh, discovered that we had to add elements in that system so that it performs and it would be uh, more performant all over the years. So I will not go in, in detail. Um, but just to say that uh, this process is always evolving and, and, and we will see after it's coming to a kind of revolution now. So how it evolves, uh, this is an example here on, on, let's say, two or three reforms on the cap. So we had before 2003, <coughs> the period where we brought uh, that the couple payment. So at that time, the farmer, the farmer were paid according to the area they were uh, cropping and the type of crop. So the 
only thing between Berkeley you had to check was the type of crop and the area. And at that time we were using 10 meter resolution. Then come uh, a first reform, the decoupled payment. So at that time, farmers started to be paid not depending on the type of crop, but starting to be paid depending on farming practices to protect the environment. And uh, in addition to the type of crop, the area, we uh, started to have also to uh, check some uh, farming activity, land maintenance uh, information. And uh, with the technology also at that time allowed to go for uh, a better spectrum and, uh, and resolution, uh, spatial resolution. So we started to use one meter resolution. Then came the, uh, the, the, the reform that we have now where in addition to the land maintenance, the crop, the type of area, there is also a quantification of hedges, so all those uh, elements of, uh, of the landscape that has also to be uh, taken into consideration. So we use uh, very high resolution, uh, resolution in Italy. So you see that uh, the techniques with the evolution of, uh, of the legislation, it's a constant uh, updating or upgrading of the technology and the, the politics so that you can uh, do something that is efficient uh, on the ground. So concerning the control of remote sensing, as I said, we started in the 90s and it took something like 20 years to come to something really, really uh, mature uh, in the member states. So on, on the left hand part, you have what is the technique mainly used in different member states. So currently you have every year 5% of the farmers that are controlled uh, uh, on the spot. And uh, to do that, uh, to do that, 80% now is done using remote sensing. And most of the case, what is done still is image interpretation. So it's still visual interpretation of, of imagery, where uh, depending on the member states, you have different uh, possibilities in member states. Some of them are doing almost everything using remote sensing, like, uh, like in Italy, where you have a very high resolution imagery used for the area measurements and some high resolution dates in order to come to a safe with the uh, farming practices, the type of crop, etc. Some of our other member states do only measurement on very high resolution and they use systematic rapid field visit uh, uh, for the rest. And still, some member states, very few, are remain on, on fields like uh, Austria. Um, and we are like this with something like uh, 500,000 uh, square kilometers of uh, very high resolution images that are acquired every year in order to help and that are paid by the Commission and given to the member states so that they can do uh, the control in, in France. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see for 17, for instance, the areas that are, that are covered um, every year. So that was up to now, which is good because by implementing that technique, we, with the growth of auditors, you have audit, etc. we managed to have with the member states a system where you have less than 2% error in the uh, in the management of that budget. So it means that when you have an audit, less than 2% of area were um, uh, requested unduly, let's say, by, by farmers. So it's a very efficient system now. We managed to get something very efficient. The only problem is it's very costly still with the imagery, the number of people that has to go on the field compared to uh, the recovery you have now because it's very accurate. In the recent two years, we, we had a big change in, in the technology. So you just had uh, very well explained uh, the, the Copernicus uh, initiative. And since two years now, you have Sentinel data provided for free. But there is also a lot of ongoing, let's say, other revolutions. So big data, cloud computing, all that change, that those things have changed really recently. 
and that allow now to, let's say, really change the situation in, uh, in many areas that uh, for our concern, uh, we, we came to a conclusion and we managed also to, con <laughs> to convince uh, politicians, etc., that there is a momentum for, for a change uh, in the management of, of the agricultural land. So, while doing that, uh, as I was saying, so the system that was existing now, you were covering every year only 5% of the farm. Now you had the possibility to follow 100% of the territory, of the European uh, territory, uh, every year or every week, indeed. Um, so this is the first aspect. The second one is uh, this system was based mainly on the, on the system of penalties. So you were looking for errors or for false declaration by farmers and going with penalty. Now you can go with a system that is more proactive where it's more dedicated to alerting systems. So we see that following profile you can alert farmers on activities not yet done be more proactive, so having also another philosophy concerning the, um, the, um, the relationship with, with the farmers. There was also a problem of, of timing, because uh, as I was saying, up to now, these data used were paid by the Commission, so you have a certain amount of money that you can buy all what, is, uh, what was necessary, so you had to deal with three to four dates at the maximum during the, the campaign in order to come to a conclusion. Now, uh, with Sentinel data, you have weekly data, optical and radar that you can use, so you have much more information that allows you to follow the phenological aspect of, of crops uh, all, all year round. So based using that, we, we are really confident that we, we can go with a uh, system that will be a bit difficult to set at the beginning, but when it will be up and running, will be much more efficient, will be much more deterrent for the farmers, because every farmer will know that now anyone can follow the activity, etc. The, the data are available for free for anyone, for NGO, for research, for administration, so anyone can have a look at the lens. Uh, and still uh, we'll have a low uh, error rate, so it's really a big change. So this, this idea so is to go from what we were calling on the spot check or control to monitoring, with the idea that still we'll, have, we'll use very high resolution data in order to control the area, but then after we will use mainly Sentinel data and the evolution of the profile for, for those parcels in order to come to a say on the activities of farmers on, on their land. The idea is to have a process that is automatic. So this is also something that is a big change comparing to the current situation where, as I was saying, the administration is still based on image interpretation, on visual interpretation of the information. Here, it will be automatic processing of the information. And it's only on when some parcel you can't automatically to come to a, a say that you will have to use additional information in order to conclude on those, on those parcels. So this one is just to give a, an example. So it's a kind of... Uh, going against what I was saying, because I'm saying we, we don't do interpretation, visual interpretation anymore, and I show you images, but it's just to show the, uh, the theory behind. So following the uh, evolution of the crop cycle that you have above, we can determine automatically when you have an increase of vegetation, when you have the harvest, etc. So you go and look automatically to those elements and then according to what you have to control that farm. So for instance here, if a farmer has declared he's having wheat, the, let's say, only thing we will ask the farmer is to have an agricultural activity. So if you see that evolution of, of wheat, it's an agriculture activity. So we'll see that and automatically we have a green light for that farmer on that field to say he's compliant with the, with the legislation. So here also, just an example we had, 
So you can do that automatically on a huge area. It's just a small ex example on the 2,000 parcel you have, mainly on, uh, on corn and grasslands. But you can see that uh, rapidly and automatically on 2,000 parcel, we had most of them that have been accepted as corn and, uh, and grasslands. On two were rejected, so those ones are considered as or non-grass or non-corn, uh, non and only 20 were doubtful parcels, so this will be the number of parcels where still you have, you need to have a complement information in order to come to a conclusion. But just to illustrate that when we speak about simplification, etc., this, this process will be very, mostly uh, automatic, and very few things will have to be done then after. So you can have also, um, we know with, uh, with colleagues uh, and member states discussing, you can have some questioning saying, well, uh, are you sure you will see whatever and whatever you want? And here we have, for instance, an example where I put grasslands uh, here. Everything that is uh, within the, uh, black, uh, the black box is considered as grasslands, but you can see that you have uh, a lot of variation in, in that concept. And I placed also two other ones where you have the non-permanent grasslands or land in fallow, and you may have a lot of confusion in classification or in follow-up of those ones. So the, the concept we have for, for the management of the gap is we don't go blind in the classification. So we start from each parcel with the farmer declaration. So first, we already know what is the type what is supposed to be the type of land, so we don't go blind. We use that information and we look in the profile uh, at elements that will confirm or reject uh, these, uh, these elements. And really, if we have some doubt, uh, we want to use additional information, and in that case, the more we go, the more we ask farmers to, let's say, participate to, to, to the system, and also there, uh, uh, Geotype photos, it's not something that is brand new, but it's also something that has evolved a lot. Al application uh, for mobile, um, the Geotype photos per se, and also with, the, with Galileo, etc., the security of the information that you can have becomes more and more uh, efficient. So there is a possibility now to build system where a farmer can have an application upload imagery where you will be confident with the date, the time, the location of, of those parcels, and, and exchange that with the confidentiality with the uh, administration. And using that on many parcels, you will have the possibility to uh, evidence many, many things. So when you need to have a parcel with uh, this uh, species uh, richness, with a photo, you can illustrate it with the ban of, uh, of pesticide or herbicide, you can illustrate it. Uh, you have many things that can be uh, illustrated using, uh, using that tool. So by combining this type of tool plus the automatic process, we are really convinced that now we come with, uh, in a situation where um, farmers will not see any more any auditors in, in their lands and all the dossier will be mostly processed uh, automatically. So going to the, the next step, so this is why I'm saying we hope in the end to have something that is simpler for the farmers, that is simpler for the administration when it will be up and running, that we have a bunch of, of new data that we can use, different type of uh, cooperative data, obviously, uh, but still, uh, the satellite data, drones, uh, another technique that is coming also are those uh, stratospheric drones, so drones that will be uh, at 15 kilometers and be able also to capture data. Different type of information that you gather uh, in the digital declaration of, of the farmers using the monitoring data uh, and answering to the, the new legislation that is, that is coming that, it will, that will be based on, on performance. So asking the farmers really to have activities that improve uh, things for the environment, for biodiversity, climate change mitigation. So this is really the information. And also by gathering all this information that will be gathered 
also now really build database like crop uh, crop maps because we have that from the farmers declaration you may have a lot of information and if you group that also that will improve a lot also the knowledge and be able to provide advisory uh, system to, to, the, to the farmers in order to improve their farming system. So there is a lot of to gain in uh, by, by setting that. So since here the debate is, is uh, around uh, remote sensing, so we could say what would be the, the use of remote sensing for the next step? So certainly that in the next step, as I was saying, the, the control uh, with remote sensing, so visual interpretation, etc., that will be that will disappear, that will be done, and we will go for uh, a system of uh, monitoring using information and process automatically the information. Um, we <coughs> currently have a small problem. Uh, we we have a problem with the small parcel, let's say, because okay, uh, Sentinel data uh, are 10 meter resolution, and we have. Uh, many areas in Europe where the parcel maybe uh, are smaller than uh, than a half an hectare, and for those one ten meter resolution is is a bit uh, a limit. But we have some hope with the venue of uh, of new satellite. There are already existing satellite with one meter resolution, etc. But you have to pay for those data. But we also have some hope that in the future that type of information will also made available. Uh, to Copernicus. Then, uh, yeah, it will not be, as it has been presented, a direct use of, of the imagery as it was now with uh, need, uh, an image interpretation, but we, the need will be really, and as it has been uh, presented, on products, on derived product that you will use uh, in order to come to a say uh, on the activities of farm. And also that, up to now, administration are using platform design. Administration tools, it's something that is internal in the administration, closed in an informatic system in the administration. Also there, now we have a system where something else, all the information, those data will be available on, on platform, like, uh, like Copernicus. And there is also this coming DS, so those platforms where you can do computing, cloud computing on those data. So, you will do use the image, use the computing outside, and then use the result in order to come to a conclusion on those your farmers. And with that, you may have different application like okay, uh, the part is bit compli not complicated to explain, but just to explain that uh, it's try to estimate what is the percentage of non-farm uh, land area on on a parcel uh, automatically. Something that is a bit more developed is to do the, 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 let's say the mapping of the green corridors uh, in an area and trying then to use that information after uh, to tell the farmer to increase, okay, uh, to increase the um, uh, putting new hedges, etc., to uh, improve the biodiversity on the land. Precision farming also, you all know that, uh, that and with Copernicus, it's something that uh, you can do. So I've been speaking mainly on the, on the agriculture, so I'd like to just to conclude on, on my presentation to say that in the GSC, uh, concerning agriculture, we are doing more than uh, what is concerning only the, the common agriculture policy support. We have a whole group uh, working on food security, so trying to work on crop yield estimation in the and we have a whole group working since years and indeed it's the it was the start of, of our unit that activity so the crop yield estimation for for Europe uh, using remote sensing data and this activity of support to the uh, to the to the cap up to uh, the uh, let's say detail uh, implementation like we had uh, the SOSTAI model which is uh, uh, a model of, uh, of uh, to, to improve uh, farm, uh, farm activity and to improve farm um, uh, performance excuse me at different level and this is something that has been uh, implemented in the region Lombardy so we have uh, if you want to uh, 
we have a huge amount of, uh, of data on that. So speaking about those amount of data, uh, all those activities we had since the 90s, so all the imagery that has been acquired uh, for, the, uh, for the, uh, the member states, we have them stored in, uh, in the GRC, both the high, very high resolution data and uh, the high resolution data. And those data, if you want to, especially for research, uh, they are ac uh, accessible, so you can contact us. Uh, but usually, usually, if you use it for research, etc., they are accessible for free, and you can use them uh, eventually for research. That's all. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank you to all our speakers. We have a little room for uh, questions. Do you have any specific questions? Okay, I have one, very short. Uh, I think that one of the most uh, useful uh, source of information for remote sensing from in, in the last years was the somehow the revolution of LiDAR, so laser, uh, eyeborne laser scanning. We know that NASA uh, is investing uh, specifically on the JEDI uh, project for the uh, uh, LIDAR on uh, the International Space sta sta Station. Uh, I would like to know if there is something, uh, some rumors reg regarding some kind of European application of LIDAR or uh, within Copernicus or uh, still in research process or something like that. Or is it still just national? We have just started in the last uh, two committees. We have decided to move from. Um, closer, sorry, Senti. Okay, in the last two committees, we have decided just to start um, to move from an experimental, from the experimental period to using aerial information along with satellite to invest just to think how we have to invest uh, just to move to uh, pure uh, drones uh, activities at the European level. We haven't thought so far to lead or other things like that because, I mean, there is one point about Copernicus that in situ data are in charge and in the responsibility of the state members. So it's quite difficult to, to find a way how to put together the, in the policies that we carry on, the investments that we carry on at the national level with what we want to get at the European level. Think about, uh, it's quite difficult about using Canada as well. I mean, you can, uh, we have, for example, in Italy, we have more than 14, 15, we are added to 20 Canadas which is something that at European level is quite impossible. We have a two, three, four. Think about drones. How we can manage to have drones we are, which are just supported by, uh, operatively supported by the, at the European level. You, you have just to delegate that to the, the level of the state members. The numbers should be 10,000 drones or something like that, which is quite impossible. So it's a dodgy question. Uh, probably the point is just to find funds to support these activities at the, at the national level. So that's the main answer. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I close this uh, first uh, uh, plenary session.